Right, good morning everyone. It's Monday morning, new week for us. So uh, I wasn't here Friday, I was sorting out the video editing. The guys got another cross frame started. Um, they got it to the point where it's ready to scribe and have braces. They've scribed it this morning. Um, so Nye's just uh, cleaning up mortises. Howard and Steve are, Howard's boring mortises. Steve's cutting out tenons on braces and I'm cutting out some more braces ready for the next frame. So it's gonna be a busy, busy week. Uh, we've just got to work on these cross frames, but we're gonna run out of timber by the end of the week. So uh, we're gonna have to stop for um, a week for me to catch up with Millen. But that's all good, the boys are happy to do that. So yeah, we should have this uh, frame done today and then we'll start another one. Oh yeah, also, I've also bought the feet and uh, we're gonna get these feet put on as well. So uh, last night I surveyed the site, my foundation pads, and essentially we're gonna cut all the posts to the right lengths because obviously all the different pads are at different, slightly different heights. Um, so I've surveyed it and uh, we're gonna cut all the posts to the exact height they need to be so it all sits level and then uh, we'll mount the feet as well. So when we put it together, it'll just sit right straight away. So this one here is the lowest one, which I've used as a reference. So everything else is, so that, that, one's, that, that one's sitting 20 millimeters higher than this one. Uh, the biggest deviation is 51 millimeters here. Obviously these ones are taller anyway. Um, so yeah, we've got all the information now we need to cut all the post lengths to exactly the right size. So yeah, it didn't do too bad a job. This one's the biggest difference at 51. That one's just a bit too high. But all the others are, are quite reasonably close, really. Right, we're gonna have a go at mounting a foot to this post. So we just need to square it off a little bit and then uh, yeah, see about getting one that's got to sit in a slot. And yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a faff to be honest, but we'll get it. These are the slots that the feet are going to sit in. Well, that's the plan, anyway. It's not in the Right, so these are relatively time consuming, but I've got it sat on there. I haven't quite got it centered perfectly, but it's not too bad really for a first go at it. 
that's where it'll sit there. It's just my holes are a little bit off centre. But I'll get better on. So yeah, do another one. 19 to do. Right, so that, uh, that frame's done, ready to go. And I've just mounted that uh, foot plate. Howard's doing another one over there. I'm going to start another one here. And while we're doing that, Steve has started doing the truss for the next uh, end frame. There's a ways you just uh, leave Steve in the corner, quiet, and then you come back and loads of work's been done. He's the main man. Uh, right, we're just... Uh, Fitted the last of these feet for this frame. So me and Howard are both doing that while uh, Nye and Steve are working on the truss. So this frame and the frame we did last week is now ready to go. Packed up, go back to my place. So we're going to pack all this up, stack it, and I think I'm probably going to carry on fitting feet to the other posts we got. And then uh, we're going to start doing the other end frame, the gable end frame. So Steve and Howard are laying up the next frame, the last gable end frame. Me and Nye are getting the uh, purlin housings on the uh, rafters of the truss, which is going to sit on that gable end frame. finished doing those notches, housings. So the guys are just starting doing mortises, mortises and slots. And just, yeah, getting on quick as anything. I've got to go and do boring accounting team, accounting stuff, annoying me. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow. Yeah, carry on tomorrow. Morning everyone. So just about to head off to the barn and before I do that, just gonna go and put the sheep and the lambs on the reseeded field. They're all sort of uh, ready to go out together now. So we're gonna go and put them out all together, sheep and lambs all on the same field, lovely bit of grazing for them. So that should be a nice little thing to do because they'll be really happy out there. So go and do that. Um, as you can see, we've got pegs showed up, had these made. Uh, we're gonna come back to that later because they're not up to scratch. Uh, so yeah, off to uh, put the sheep out, off to the barn framing, we'll come back to these. Right, let's get these out on a nice bit of fresh reseeded pasture. Come on in, come on in. First time they're going out on a, on a nice bit of uh, luscious ground. Uh, 
Right, hey everyone, new day. Well, after break on a new day actually. This joinery is done, this frame's laid up, and the guys are just starting to scribe the braces, fit the braces, scribe them. So this is the other gable end. This is a front wall gable end. So this is one going to have a fancy bit up to the truss as well, like the other one. Uh, they're doing that and I'm over in the corner mounting uh, feet bases, post bases. So I just got that one done. They're uh, quite tricky to do and time consuming, so it's a good job for me to do really. time for a fit up so guys have just cut out all the braces and mortises so now see if it all fits together Yeah, and I'm stood on it. it. Needs to come to us. So that's another frame done then. So they're going to level all that up now and then start fitting this middle post. And then we'll have to get the truss together and then scribe all the truss in. And uh, shouldn't it should be long before this is done. We'll start laying up another one. Two more to go after this one. But they're just middle frames, not as complicated as an end one. And I'm still pushing on with the uh, post bases over in the corner there. These are really time consuming, but they're worth the effort because, when we drill, there it is. Yeah, they're worth the effort because it's gonna mount this building so firmly to those foundations and it's a very windy location so it's going to give me lots of confidence there we go that one's done so until i get the proper bolts we're just uh, poking these bolts through uh, should i do it from the other side yeah and then eventually i'll get the proper ones this will all bolt together squeeze all this together all mounted hard to the foundation, can't go wrong. Right, it's getting late in the day. Uh, Howard and I are just starting to, well, they've just scribed up the uh, post into truss tie beam. Um, so they'll be working on that. Tomorrow, there's braces still and everything to fit to that and a bit of messing around. I'm going to get the other three uh, post bases fitted to these while they do that. And then tomorrow, this frame, another gable end frame will be done. And then we'll start on the next one, which doesn't have all that intricate stuff involved in it. Just the truss. All right, back from the barn and uh, got to have a proper look at these pegs. As soon as I took them out of the box, I could see that they weren't up to scratch. Um, yeah, now I'm looking at them closer, I'm even more disappointed by them. So normally I'd make these myself, I really like making them, but you need straight grained oak and um, you know I needed 600 for this building and being as busy as I am at the moment, I thought it'd be a better idea, since I don't have the material anyway, just to get a timber framing company to make them. 
I'm not going to name the company because the person has been reasonable about it and I've got some money back because of the bad quality. Um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty bad and I have to go through every single one of them now and change them all, show you the problems. So first thing is just how poor the quality is. I mean, there's a couple. I mean, that is really, really poor. I mean, there's some real belters in there. Like, I paid £1.50 each for these. I mean, look at that. It's split. I mean, that's, that's firewood. I mean, look at that one. Knotted. Can't use that. Yeah, like these. Yeah, crap. Uh, they're all supposed to be 330 millimetres long. I get a tape. They're all supposed to be 330 millimetres which those ones are. Uh, that one there is 290. I've got one here that's 250. So if that's in a 200 millimeter piece of wood, which it is, it won't even have sort of you know, 20 mil stuck at the end, maybe. Some of the bits of wood are 210. Can you see that? Sorry. Yeah, so, and there's quite a few. There's whole bundles here that are too short. Like that whole bundle is too short. It's supposed to be 330. 280, 280, too short. They're also been made by different people. So there's these style, that's a bit of a better bundle really. There's those style. But then there's these ones have been made completely differently. So you see those ones are sort of right. And then there's these ones who have not really had any taper given to them and just been made the point really tiny. There's no consistency to them. They're not well done at all. Well, the real shockers over here. I mean, look at that. How did that end up in the pile? I paid one pound fifty for that. You know, I did get a bit of money back, like I say. But I mean, look, that's that's firewood. Look at that. What is that? What craftsman would be happy to send that out to hold a building together? I mean, look at that. That is a real beauty, isn't it, of a peg? It's a natural product, but that, when you split it, it doesn't split right, it's got a knot in it, it goes in the bin, in the firewood. You know? That. That's the end of it, that's the end of the peg. That's the point. A big flat spot in it. And the end's knackered. So yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. So yeah, not only do they uh, do they look really bad, the quality's poor. Another one with a big knot in the middle of it, right where it has to interact with the tenon. But not only do they look really poor, they're also just not fit for purpose at all. And I'm gonna have to redo every single one of them. So let's say, for example, we take this pack that looks all right, right length and everything, one pound fifty each. And let's say we're putting the building up today drag a big piece of you know a whole frame up everything sort of there waiting to go need to bang a peg in go to bang the peg in into a 19 millimeter hole which is what we got here go to bang it in fine 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 won't go in that if i bang that in to where it needs to be you know they're not long enough for that to be all the stick out because we're not even enough of the way through the wood yet you see it's 200 mil piece of timber that's only just sticking out now so that needs to come through a lot more yet out the side and if i was to bang that in bang 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 it's going to split this bit of wood because the end of it is so much bigger than a 19 mil hole so i've got a uh, this one is savable if i take this end down to 19 so it'll drive all the way through another one that you can see it in them they've got a big bulbous end on them so you go to bang it in on site putting the frame up it stops it stops and won't go in some of them are ridiculous they're just way too big like some of these ones that have been made by a different person they won't go in at all like that's that's the limit it's got a big split down it you know that won't go in it will just split the timber out you know pick some other ones there's that beauty there. You know, they're supposed to go through a 19 millimeter hole. Some of them don't even go in a third of the way. If I find a beauty. There you go, look at that. What's that supposed to do? 
you know it will drive in it will drive in but it will split that piece of timber out so i've got to go through that modify every single one of them now on the shave horse try and get them so i can use them so over the years i've uh, i've learned that you can't trust people to do good work you just can't do it so before i ordered 600 pegs i bought a sample pack here's some of them First ones that came, a sample pack of 15. These are what they sent. They're great, they're right, that's how they should be. Put it in a 19 millimeter hole, it goes down to there. That last little bit will tap in, won't take much force. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it should really fit through the hole, but that, you know, that's completely passable. Those are what I ordered. I've got 600 of something completely different made by two or three different people. So yeah, now we've got to modify every single one of them. So we take one of these pegs with a big bulbous end on it, try it in a hole. We can see that that's not gonna pound in. If it does, it's gonna split the bit of wood because it's got this massive fat end on it. And then put it on the shave horse. Take that end down so it'll fit in a 19 millimeter hole without getting jammed up. Because if you get these jammed up, there's really no getting them back out again. You have to try and drill them out. And they're in an offset hole, so you can't just drill through. So you have to sort of drill from both sides without damaging the hole. And you know, you could be there an hour trying to get one of these back out. It's a nightmare, I've done it. You have to make sure they, they're not going to do that. So there we go. That's more like it. I'll fit in that hole better now. Won't get jammed up, won't split stuff. So I'll do that 600 times. But don't fancy doing that 600 times because that's going to take forever. So I'm going to go and make a tool to do it so that they're so it's faster, easier, and they're all consistent. Because if I make a tool, I know for a fact they're not going to get jammed up and they'll all be right. Right, so we've got uh, the die made to this point. So we've got the right size hole this end, and uh, we've got a too small hole now here, so I just need to bore this out wider to about here, maybe, so that when we drive the peg through, it's not gonna get stuck in there. So obviously if the hole is the right size all the way through this length, it's gonna be too much force to get it through. So just bore this back now, oversized, it's about here, and that'd be perfect. There we go, one die made. So now I can just drive the pegs through that and it should take them to the right size, which is what should have been done from the start when they made them really. No, I haven't tried to make that really nice, so it's just rough. This is all it needs to be. All right, so let's just give it a try before we get it all properly set up. Here's one of the pegs with a big stumpy end that never work. See it just get jammed in that hole. Let me drive that through. And then you've got to put another one behind it to get that first one out. Oh, hitting the bottom of your vice. There we go. And 
and now that is shaved to the right size hasn't got a taper on that bit but um, that won't matter because from there back it won't actually be interacting with the join I just want it to not split out that hole that it's getting driven into but now it's the right size for that it won't split that out so what you should do when making pegs is you should run the blanks through a die first and then taper them so that they're the right size to start with but I can't do that now because someone's already you know done that so we just have to uh, make them good you know there's significant amounts come off them that is enough to get that peg really jammed up in there That one would have been okay. Yeah, what they come out as after going through there is more what we need. Cool. The final check here is I've drilled this 19 mil hole really close to the edge in a thin bit of wood. So if we can drive that all the way through there without it splitting, we won't get any splitting issues when we come to it. That's what we want. Perfect. That is exactly what we want. Drive one of the ones that hasn't been put through the die yet. Make sure we miss the vice. Drive that through there. That's the issue. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a project worthwhile. So I just got to drive 600 of them through that. And then we'll be good. And next time, do the job yourself. Right, morning everyone, another day. And uh, Howard, Steve and I are just gonna get this laid out, ready to put the braces in. Two braces for the, uh, for the truss, truss down to the post. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna get the three uh, post bases mounted to these. And then sort of by lunchtime, one o'clock, this frame will be done, ready to put, put in the stack, ready to go back, ready to go up. Right, assembly time. Right, gently, gently though, because I uh, don't really want to. Aha! Holding off a little bit on somewhere, but. Give it a measure to see. Yeah, the back is definitely different. Let's just check this diagonal again in case we wobble it with the pot. The best technique I've found for these is to uh, drill all the way through, try and find the hole for the bracket, and then just keep drilling until you almost get out the other side. I can feel that just coming through there. So I'm through the plate now, through the hole, that's lined up. I'm gonna take that out. It does, uh, does wreck you a bit, a little bit. Not too bad. And do you countersink that side? piece of a uh, 16 millimeter stud in to find that hole okay and then I've got to try and drill through again to find the other hole shot Ooh. 
need to go up. Yeah. We? Uh, we won't go up though because we're in our. So once they get that finely checked and sorted out, we're going to start laying up another wall frame. So we've got the material to do one more, intermediate one. While they're laying that out, I'm going to get the other two post spaces done on these two. And then we stack that in the pile. Um, and then we're out of material. So we've got a week off then while I mill. Hopefully some wood will show up. And uh, we've also decided we're going to do another layup as well to uh, make sure that all the trusses tie into the wall plate properly. We're going to run out the two wall plates all the way down the building, space them, level them, get them as they're going to sit on the building. And then we're going to place the trusses on them and scribe in all of the notches that the trusses sit in as well. That means once we go to put it up on site, they'll just sit down into it. We won't have to mess around at height. So yeah. It's going to be about three days as well doing that. Right, that frame is done and we're going to pack it away and put it in the stack so the guys can start laying out the next one and I'll put the other two feet on in the stack so I'm not in the way. So I've got those, those two to do. And then we run out of timber. But that should keep us going until Friday, tomorrow. Yeah, another one bites the dust. Right, hey everyone. Friday afternoon, Steve and Howard have just uh, got another wall frame mostly done. Me and I have been making a new mid rail because one of the mid rails is a really bad condition piece of wood as it's dried out. There's a lot of saps come out of it. It's looking rough, so we're just making a new one. Um, so we're just fitting that up just because it's a much nicer bit of timber. And uh, yeah, Howard's just waiting for us to finish and then he's going to fit this last post to this one. And then that's it, we're out of timber. So we need to mill some more and then we can carry on uh, week after next is the plan. I was hoping to get a video out this Friday, but I've got no internet. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you'll probably see this next week. All right, well, that's uh, going to be the end of this video. All of these bits here are done and ready to come back to my place and be put up. A lot of work went into getting it to that stage. A lot of work. Uh, still lots to do, but uh, that aspect's done. And, uh, one more, we replaced that mid rail that's sorted out back in the stack. Got this next frame underway, so we need to do one more of these. And once we've done one more of them, we need to make three more trusses. And then once we've made the three trusses, we need to get the two wall plates laid out, put the trusses between them, and then make sure all of the, everything's gonna sit right on the wall plates, then we're done. But before then, I need to mill a load of timber, and these guys have got to go off for a week and do some other work. So yeah, that's uh, basically it now for a week. We'll uh, reconvene once I've got some more timber and they're back and we'll get this thing finished. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.